Hello everybody, welcome to the video. I'm Jake. If you're new, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing something that pretty much every YouTuber that talks about football has done. I'm going to be making my predictions for the upcoming Premier League season 2020 to 2021. All 20 places, who's going to get relegated, who's going to get the top four, who's going to win the title, all that kind of thing. We're going to start from 20th and work our way up. Thanks to the comment on my last Chelsea video where someone told me to make this kind of video. It's one of the first times that someone's actually told me the kind of video to make, so you know, I'm going to do it and hopefully you guys enjoy it. At the time of recording, we're sitting on 135 subscribers and I want to be as close to 150 by the end of the month as I can be. So if you can help us push for the first goal, which is 140 subscribers, by hitting that subscribe button, that means a lot. And if you could hit that like button too, just to push this out to a few more people the last time that you guys spammed the like button the video got sent out to loads more and it was one of my most viewed videos yet so no messing around no waiting we're going to go straight into 20th place my pick for the bottom of the table this season is Fulham now don't get me wrong I don't want Fulham to go down I think they've got an exciting young manager they've got an exciting team as well I felt bad for them the other season when they came up and went straight back down because they spent so much money it looked like they had a team that on paper could have done really well and it just didn't you get the teams like Wolves where they spend the money and then they do really well but for Fulham it didn't really work out where teams really gel and their recruitment hasn't looked that good so far so I don't think they're going to have enough to stay up they could be anywhere in the bottom three for me but I think they will go down and they'll just become a Premier League yo-yo club where they keep going up and down but for me Fulham of a team that are going to go down in 20th place moving on to the 19th spot and we've got another newly promoted side in West Brom I think their recruitment hasn't looked terrible but I just don't think they've got enough to stay up they are the kind of team that will be fighting on probably the last day of the season not playing the most attractive football but just trying to grind out results and for all I know they could stay up but for for me, I just think all the other teams in division have a bit more than them and I think they will go down in 19th place. And much like Fulham, I expect in a couple of years they'll come back up and then drop down again. And unless there's some major changes at West Brom, I don't see them being a consistent like 10th place, 11th place team for a while yet. For the final relegation spot, I've gone for Aston Villa. They managed to narrowly escape going down last season. Whether you think it was fair or not because of a lot of like VAR, things like that goal where it went in, but they didn't really count it because goal line technology wasn't working that day. Arguably, they could have gone down this season, but they were kept up by their main man, Jack Grealish, pretty much. And I think although he will be good again this season, I just, I just don't think Villa will have enough to stay up this time. And I expect them to go down. Out of the teams I've said so far, they're the team that I think have the most likely chance of staying up, which is why I've put them in 18th place. But again, I just think everyone else in the division should have a bit more than Villa and should be able to stay up. In 16th place, we've got Brighton. I think they've been a pretty good team under Graham Potter and I don't expect them to go down, but I also don't expect them to do well. Above them in the table, you've got teams like Southampton, Burnley, and I just think while Brighton are a decent team, they're not as good as teams like that. So I expect them to just be around this place. They could be anywhere between like 17th and 15th, just one of them kind of teams. So Brighton, for me, are going to be in 17th place. Moving on to 16th place, I've gone for West Ham. I feel like West Ham are one of them teams where they've got so much potential. You see little glimpses, like players like Felipe Anderson a couple of seasons ago look really good for a little period of time and then dropped off. The club doesn't seem to have a correct vision of where they're going to go, so I think they will just float around where they are right now, which is in that bottom half of the table. So I've put them 16th place, West Ham. I don't think by the end of the season they'll be in danger of getting relegated, but I think they'll just be comfortably in that kind of position as they have often been in recent seasons. Now in 15th place, I've gone for Newcastle. Under Steve Bruce, they've actually spent a decent amount of money at the time of I recorded this video. They've brought a new left back in Jamal Lewis. Callum Wilson up front brought in Ryan Fraser. They're apparently, according to Fabrizio Romano, making £40 million moves for players in the French League. So they've got quite a good team going Newcastle, alongside some of their star players like St. Maximan. I think they'll comfortably stay up, but I don't think they'll do much more than that. Just 15th place for Newcastle, pretty average. I think that's where they'll be. In 14th place, we've got a team that if you said the name 14th place, I always think of this team, and it's Crystal Palace. But for all I know, they'll probably never finish 14th, but just in my head, they're that kind of team that are always sitting in that part of the table. So I've gone for Crystal Palace. I think, again, they'll stay up. They won't have too much problems. They won't set the world alight either. They'll get a couple of nice wins along the way because as they always do, they usually get a win against a team that they should not get a win against. So I don't really have too much more to say on that one. Roy Hodgson's Crystal Palace in 14th place. Now for the top 13 teams in the league. For me, these are teams that are all pretty good teams. I would class them as good teams. And in 13th, I've gone for Sheffield United. Now I know that might seem as a surprise seeing as Sheffield finished quite high on the table last season. I think they will still stay up do pretty good and I think they'll play good football throughout the season under Chris Wilder they've just signed Ethan Ampadu on loan I think he'll be very good for them I do like Berger in the midfield as well for Sheffield he seems like a really good player and from my football manager days I know that he usually turns out to be a really good player not that that's in any real indication of real life form but I think he is a good player for them I think they'll still do well they won't reach the heights that they did last season I think a lot of their results in the early half of the season came through like shock and surprise of them just playing tactics that no one had really seen in the Premier League 
with their overlapping centre backs, but I think people might get a bit more used to them. They'll still do well, but I'm putting them 13th for this video. In 12th place, Sean Dyche is Burnley. They're a team that just have a lot of grit about them, solid defensively, and even though they haven't got any like headlining players like other teams do, I think Burnley always get a lot of good results throughout the season. They're consistent, especially usually in the second half of the season. They start to pick up a few more points. I expect them to do pretty well. A solid defence is a great foundation for any team. So for me, Burnley are going to finish 12th. In 11th place, it's the only other promoted team I haven't talked about so far. It's Leeds. Leeds have spent a lot of money and I know they've got a big fan base and I'm very happy for them to be in the Premier League. When you think of Premier League clubs, Leeds is one of them that comes to mind, even though they haven't been in the Premier League for so long. And under Belsia as well, I think they're going to do really well. They've gone out and brought Rodrigo. They're looking like they're going to sign another centre-back. And apparently they're also in 40 million talks for another player. So Leeds are looking very good. And I think they're going to be the surprise package this season. Although a lot of people are already pinning them as that. So I don't think it's much of a surprise. But I can definitely see them over the next few years becoming like a Wolves type team. Where they're always up there with the big boys. Not making the top four just yet. But being one of them kind of teams that are just always around there. Picking up some nice results throughout the season. And playing good attractive football. Moving into the top 10 now. In 10th place I've got Southampton. Southampton, I think, are a lot better team than people give them credit for. I think after that 7-1 loss, I think it was 7-1, where they lost to Leicester, they started picking up a bit of form, and players like Danny Ings play really well for them. I think Shea Adams is going to have a breakout season for them too. They've invested quite nicely in positions that they needed investment in. I know they have lost Hoiberg to Spurs, but I think they'll still be a good team, and I think Southampton would do well and get that 10th place spot. In 9th place is the team of the city that I'm from, Leicester. I know they finished higher up last season, but I just think all the teams that I've put ahead of them in this list are just better teams this season in terms of squad and just the feeling that I get when I think about that team. I think they're going to play better. Leicester, not a bad team at all. A really good team. Fun to watch too. They have obviously lost Ben Chilwell. Pereira's out at the start of this season. I think Johnny Evans is injured or suspended and Soyuncu is suspended too. So at the start of the season, I don't expect them to pick up too many points, but we'll see how they do. They brought their new man from Atalanta, so it'll be exciting to see how he does. But I think Leicester, come ninth, have a good season. Nothing more than that. Leicester ninth place. In eighth place is a team that a lot of people are talking about in a minute as dark horses to push for them European spots. It is Everton. They've invested heavily, especially in their midfield this summer. They've signed Ducore, Allen and James Rodriguez. If they play the 4-3-3, three, three, that'll be like a completely new central midfield. But I think Andre Gomez will probably play in there too. They've got players like Tom Davis. And I think some players like James Rodriguez might get pushed out wide. But I think Everton are really interesting under Carlo Ancelotti. Maybe if they can get another centre-back or something like that, just improve their defence a bit. I think they're a really good prospect this season. Seventh place now, and it's a team that I have quite a soft spot for, actually. I think they play really good football to watch. I think everyone will appreciate that they are a very good team now. And while they're not cracking that top six, I think they are one of the big boys. It is Wolves. They've just spent £40 million to buy a new striker, Fabio Silva. They've pretty much bought the whole Portuguese national team, bar Cristiano Ronaldo and Bruno Fernandes. And I just think Wolves would be a very good team this season, as they always are. I expect them to do well, maybe even challenge for that top six. Maybe they'll take one of the top six teams out of them places. And I think Wolves aren't just one of them one or two season teams that come up to the top of the division. I know West Ham did it for a bit when they had Pyatt. I think Wolves will stay there for a long while with the investment that they've got. And one day they will be a Champions League team, in my opinion. In sixth place, it's the stars of all or nothing this season. It's Tottenham Hotspur. Under Jose Mourinho, I think they'll do decently this season, but I don't expect anything more than sixth. I don't think they'll crack the top five. I think that Tottenham squad peaked a few years ago. I do like Bergwijn and Son. I think Doherty is a good signing, but I don't think he fixes Spurs' defence completely. They're losing players like Vertonghen. So I think Spurs will be in sixth for me, unless they make any more transfers that change my mind. But I'm going to put Spurs in sixth place. Doing well, but you know, Spurs always below Chelsea. Fifth and fourth place are probably the biggest dilemma I had here and probably the ones that are going to cause the most polarising opinions. But I'm going to put Manchester United in fifth place. Unless you do recruit like a Sancho or someone else like that, I just think they're going to be in fifth. I know Donny van der Beek, it's a good signing, but they've also got Pogba, Bruno Fernandes and Donny van der Beek. I can't see all three of them playing together, which one of them will do the defensive work. So I think Donny van der Beek kind of comes in as a Bruno Fernandes understudy. When Fernandes won't play some games, van der Beek will play the others and obviously Pogba will probably be out injured for half a season. Van der Beek can play then too. But yeah, I think Manu would just come fifth. I don't think they've got enough about them again to challenge top four. I know that Chelsea didn't do that well last season. Obviously, Manchester United finished ahead of them. Fourth place for Chelsea was quite good. Third place for Manchester United was also good. But I just think last season was less of teams playing well, but just other teams not performing well at all. Because like Chelsea, Manchester United must have had 10 or 20 opportunities where they could have overtaken each other and switched positions, and they just never did. I think Chelsea have addressed that, found the problem positions and brought a lot of players, where Manchester United just seem to have brought like a luxury signing in Van Der Beek. I don't think they've fixed the positions that they needed to. But I am excited to see Dean Henderson play instead of De Gea. I'm excited to see who they pick there. So in my opinion, Manchester United will come fifth. And then in fourth place, I've gone for Arsenal. 
Towards the end of last season, I just got quite a good feeling about Arsenal's team and I think they're developing quite nicely too. I still hold the opinion that William will be quite good from this season, although I don't think it's this great signing where they've stole the player off Chelsea. I think it's just more of a case of Chelsea don't really need him anymore, he's moved on. Arsenal will get one or two good years out of him and he'll be gone. I think Arsenal should have invested in some younger talent to actually build a squad around rather than bring in William because I think it's going to push someone like Pepe out of the team a little bit or at least give him competition where in reality I know some people think Pepe had a really poor first season but I think he just needed to get into the league and I think he has looked good in spells and I think if you just give him that position to hold as his own he would improve a lot more. Obviously they've got Aubameyang captaining that team he seems like he's going to sign a new deal. I like the look of Tierney who's fit now for the majority of the season. I think Saliba's going to break out as their starting centre-back and I think Arteta will do a pretty good job with this Arsenal team so I'm putting them in fourth place. In third place, I've gone for my own team, Chelsea. I think we've improved massively this summer. Maybe not enough to challenge the big boys just yet. Not that I think we need any additional signings. I just think we need a bit of time for this team to gel together. We've brought a lot of different players. I think six of like the ideal starting 11 haven't even played for the club before. So it's going to be interesting to see how they all integrate with each other. I could have easily said Chelsea will win the league, but I don't want to put that kind of pressure on us. I think we'll improve get a lot more points in last season but only move one place up in the division. I think most teams are going to step up their game this season. I think Chelsea will be one of them but everyone else will too. So for me Chelsea are going to finish third. Now in second place obviously you'll know the top two are going to be for me either Liverpool or City. I've gone for Liverpool to win the league. The reason I've chose City for second is I know they have brought out young winger Torres and they've brought Nathan Ake but I still don't think that the signings they need to fix their team. Pep Guardiola will obviously push his team to another level again to try and compete but I don't think they've gone out and like spent like Chelsea have if they had and like actually bought the players that they needed for the team. I think they would have done really well. But even though I really like Ake, I don't know if he fixes all of Man City's problems. He'll be good for Man City, but when they actually get pressured, I'm not sure he'll be that good at defending alongside Laporte. I hope he proves me otherwise though, because I do really like Ake, but I'm going to put City as the second place team and retaining the title is obviously Liverpool. I don't think Liverpool will do as well as they did last season. And I'm still of the opinion that Liverpool last season weren't as good as Liverpool this season when they won the Champions League. I think that season was just unlucky that Man City performed out of their skins. I think Liverpool last season, I don't want to say they got lucky. They won the league by a massive margin of course but there are a lot of games where they just won it by one goal which is obviously the sign of champions but I don't think they'll be able to get as many results like that this season I think they'll still finish top I think it'll be a lot closer than it was this season though Liverpool don't seem like they're going to spend too much money I still think if they lose Wijnaldum and bring in Thiago that they have actually improved their team there but overall I don't think Liverpool need that much improvement I think they will go again and I think they will be champions once more I hope that I'm wrong about that and maybe Chelsea could overthrow them but I don't see it happening just yet so for me Liverpool are champions and that is my Premier League table prediction. So again, thank you to the guy who commented under my last video to make this kind of video. If you guys have any comments about the table that I've picked or any interesting ideas for another video, probably to do with Chelsea, then let me know. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, feel free to hit that like button and help us get to 140 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one, guys. Goodbye.